Hello Calc Kids, this is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. Today we're going to look more at volumes and when we have volume of a solid when we take a cross section. Now it's building off what we just did in our last lesson, so this should go pretty quick. The main difference now is we're going to focus in on triangles and a semicircle and when those cross sections look like either triangles or semicircles and how we calculate that out. So as a reminder, when we want to know the volume and all we have is the known cross sections, you take the area of one of the cross sections and then you integrate it across an interval. So for the example, this picture, it would go from A to B. And so we take all of the possible cross sections that are of this base. This is the base of the solid, if you remember that from our last lesson. Okay, so we're gonna take a cross section like this. So let's take a look at what this, these are gonna look like in this lesson. So here I have a cross section, but what is it? We can't tell what it is unless we f I flip this diagram over and look at it. Every, no matter what, if we just draw a line like this, we don't know if it's a square, rectangle, triangle, semicircle. So this one is going to look like a triangle. So this one is an equilateral triangle where all three sides are exactly the same thing. So the cross section, this little area here, the line that we draw represents the same length of all three sides of the triangle. So let me add in some more triangles here so we can add in here. You see as we go across this, let's pull that down here. You can see as we go across and add more cross sections, it starts to fill out and creates this interesting shape. What does that look like? Looks like this, oh, that's cool. So there we've got our solid with the base of it being the graph, the region of those two graphs that were bounded that we showed. So what if I change that? There's my cross section. Let's change that to a semicircle. What would that look like? So if I add in a few more cross sections, the shape of that, there's my semicircle, right? So let's, well, that's too fast. Let's spin that a little bit. You can see if I take these out, there's my semicircles, kind of cool. Okay, stop spinning, making me dizzy. So you can see my semicircles. Now notice then what's the area of a semicircle? We'd have to figure out the area of a circle, divide it by two, and then we integrate that whole thing. So that's what we're doing today. Let's just take a look. What's that shape look like? We flip that up. Okay, cool. So just not as pointy as the equilateral triangle. You can see nice, smooth semicircles all over there. All right, let's get back to how do we practice this? Well, we first have to know the area of these things, an equilateral triangle. Let's start off with that. An equilateral triangle's area is the square root of three over four S squared. You do not have to have that memorized. On an AP exam, they give that to you. There's no way you're going, they're going to expect you to have to memorize that thing. But we wanna be able to practice with various different types of cross sections. And so this then, uh, that's the area. And then again, you have to know what's the side of the equilateral triangle. It's just the distance between the two curves of our bounded region. So the function that's larger minus the function that is smaller. And this would, of course, would also have the same type of concept with respect to y if it was perpendicular to the y-axis. So I know ours here said perpendicular, uh, where did it say there? There we go, perpendicular to the x-axis. So that's what we're practicing in the video lesson, but your lesson will also have with respect to y where you might go the other direction. So just be aware of that as we practice this. Uh, what about an isosceles right triangle? So what is that? Let's remind ourselves, isosceles, remember? That's where the two legs are the same, like this. And then you have a hypotenuse. So this and this side are exactly the same thing. So I drew it like this because we're going to say instead of the hypotenuse being on the uh, that cross section, this line right here, th we're not gonna say that's the hypotenuse. We're going to say that is one of these sides. It's a little bit easier to figure out the area if we do that. It would be a totally different shape if we say it's the hypotenuse. So the area then is just, it's like half of a square, right? If I take an isosceles triangle, it's half of a square. So that one makes this a little easier. And then we just have to remember, then we found that side by just taking the distance between those two lines, the larger one minus the smaller one. Now a semicircle is where it gets a little tricky and you would have to have this memorized. These should probably be given to you in an AP exam, but these, this one would not. So a semicircle is when you take the area of a circle, which is pi r squared, and then you take half of it because it is a semicircle. So uh, this, yes, you have to memorize it. So it's pretty easy because you just got to remember the area of a circle and take half, but this is where it gets tricky. It's the r. What is the radius? I'm going to go back to my picture. If you look at this circle, the semicircle, what is the radius of this semicircle? It's only from the middle down. It's only halfway. If we just take the f and subtract the g, you're going to get the diameter of the circle. So for the radius, we have to take half of that. So now we go back to our formula and we see that if we're look, calculating what is the radius, we take 
f minus g and then take half of it. So that's the trick here with semicircles. You're gonna have a bunch of fractions going on. So this whole thing goes inside where the r is. So you're gonna end up squaring that, that whole fraction there. All right, let's put it to use and see what we come up with. Equilateral triangle. So we're going to go from zero to one. That's pretty simple. And then we take the square root of three over four. Did I do that right? Yes, square root of three over four. And then it is the side squared with respect to x. And what was the side? So if you don't remember, I'm going to write it down here. We had our, One of our equations was y equals the square root of x. And the other equation was y equals x squared. Whoa, that was weird. Let's fix that. There we go. Y equals x squared. And then the square root of x was on top, right? Square root of x and then x squared. Yeah, something like that. So that's the area we're looking at. So the square root of x comes first and then minus the x squared. So that's my, my setup. And then we could uh, do this by hand, multiply it all out, or use a calculator to help us. On this lesson, again, you can practice with the calculator um, just doing the math nine option to calculate what that would be. So on isosceles right triangle, now we're going to still go from zero to one. Uh, this time though, it's half, an isosceles right triangle is half of a square. So it's half of the area of a square, which is again, quantity squared of a side. So minus x squared with respect to x. So that's an easy enough setup. Semicircle, this is where it gets a little harder. And this, to be honest, this is the one that I actually see most common of these three. When I look back a whole bunch of different AP exams, semicircles come up a lot more often than I've seen the triangles come up. So just be aware of that. You really wanna make sure you can do the semicircles. Uh, so let's set up this integral. We go from zero to one. Now we start off with taking the area of a semicircle, which is half of a circle. And the area of a circle is pi r squared, like this. So we have half of pi r squared. Now, what is r squared? Radius is half of the diameter. So I'm going to make it look like this. And then the diameter was square root of x minus x squared. So this gives me the quantity squared is where the r goes inside of that thing. So now let's see what happens when we clean this up a bit. I'm going to have pi over 2. And then I still have this quantity squared. So square root of x minus x squared. But underneath, I'm going, now going to say 4 because that 2 is being squared. So it's now a 4 with respect to x. And now this whole thing can clean up a bit and become pi over 8. I'm going to move the constant to the front. 0 to 1 of square root of x minus x squared with respect to x. So this is the tricky part here is figuring out where all of these little fractions are going and then how to simplify it. So let's take a look back at this again. This one half right there. Why is that in there? It's because it's half of the area of a circle. And then this one half right here, why is it there? Because we wanted to take half of the diameter. So this is your r, and you needed half of the diameter to do this. Okay, so again, on this lesson, I did not do anything with respect to y. You will have that in this practice problems, as well as the mastery check and on your future tests. So just be aware of that you still are going to practice with respect to y. But for this video lesson, we're just setting up the formulas and, uh, and being able to use them from there. So rock that mastery check, and I'll see you back in our next lesson.